It's time for another fun geometry puzzle from Archimedes Lab. I'll leave a link in the description to the original puzzle. It's our objective to find the area of the blue square and to express it in terms of A, the diameter of the semicircle. Specifically, we're challenged to do so without using trigonometry. The details we have are that this is a semicircle whose radius is A over two, so the whole diameter is A. We also have have this smaller circle inscribed in the semicircle. There's also this segment Q, which goes from the center of the yellow circle to the center of the diameter of the semicircle. And you can see that the point where the yellow circle touches the diameter is to the right of the center. This Q segment is also the segment such that if we were to continue it, it would intersect this other point that's shared between the yellow circle and the semicircle. So if we drew this whole diameter of the yellow circle, it would intersect both the yellow circle and the semicircle. And finally, we have a blue square, one side of which lies along part of the semicircle and the top right vertex of which touches the smaller circle. And again, we're going to find the area of the blue square without trigonometry. We're mostly going to use pretty basic geometry facts, including the fact that tangents to a circle from an exterior point are congruent. So this diagonal of a square is tangent to the circle, and this segment here is tangent to the circle, so those have to be congruent. A less common result we're going to use is the angle bisector theorem. This says that in a triangle, if we draw one of the angle's bisectors, it will cut the opposite side into the same ratio as the other two sides that it didn't cut. So it cuts this opposite side in ratio x to y, and that has to be the same as a to be, so we're going to use this as well. This isn't going to be extraordinarily difficult, but it's definitely a little bit harder than a lot of the little geometry puzzles I see on the internet. So your last chance now to pause the video and try this yourself, let's get into the solution. We're going to begin by drawing a large square that contains this figure, which has the diameter of the semicircle as its bottom side. So here's what we are looking at now. Again, this larger square has the diameter of the semicircle as its bottom side. Remember that diameter is A, so the side length of this square is A. Now we're going to begin with a little bit of labeling and then a couple basic constructions we're going to need. Let's label the vertices of this square Q, R, and S, and we're not going to need the other vertex, so I'm not going to bother naming it. We'll also name the center of the circle O. And now for our next addition to this beautiful picture, we're going to draw a diagonal of the larger square, which necessarily passes through this point P. There we go, and the part of this diagonal which lies inside the blue square, that is the diagonal of the blue square, we're going to say that has a length of D for diagonal. The reason we know it has to pass through P is that the diagonal of the larger square starts here at point Q, and the diagonal of the smaller square starts here at point Q. And since they're squares, we can view the diagonal as a line with slope one. And so, yeah, it would have to be the same line that is the diagonal of both the smaller square and the larger square. Next, we're going to draw the line passing through Q and O and draw it until it intersects the opposite side of the large square. This point where that purple line cuts the side of the large square, we're going to call that point T. Remember, we know that the side lengths of the square are A, but this little part here between R and T, we'll say that has a length of little t, meaning that the length of the part up here is A minus little t. Now we're going to introduce what will end up being two right triangles by drawing the segment that connects O, the center of the circle, to this point P on the circle. That of course is a radius and is thus perpendicular to this tangent. And then we're also going to draw the radius that goes from O to the point where the semicircle's diameter meets the circle, which is another point of tangency. And so this angle here between the radius and the tangent is also a right angle. And we'll go ahead and name this point of tangent agency big N. Now is also a fine time to point out there's this tiny little distance between the center of the diameter of the semicircle 
and this point of tangency. There's that tiny little distance there, so we're going to give that a name as well. Let's go ahead and call that lowercase b. All right, time to start making some assertions. We know that these two right triangles are congruent. That is, triangle QOP is congruent to triangle QON, and that is by side angle side. These sides are tangents from the same exterior point, so they are congruent. Then these angles are right angles, and then these sides are radii of the same circle, so they are congruent as well. So by side angle side, we've got congruent triangles there. This means that the length of D, the diagonal of the blue square, is A over 2, the radius of the semicircle, A over 2, plus this little bit, which is B. So we go A over 2, plus b to get there. Again, this side is the length of that side, which is the diagonal. So the diagonal of that blue square is a over two plus b. Now, because we've argued that these two right triangles are congruent, we know that this purple line is actually bisecting this angle so that these two angles must be congruent and we can use the angle bisector theorem. However, it's important to know when using this theorem now, we are applying it to a big triangle, this one here, SQR. This angle, SQR, of that same triangle has been bisected by this purple line. And so the ratio into which this angle bisector cut the opposite side must equal the ratio of the other two sides. So we could say that A minus T over T that has to be the same as this over this. So A minus T over T, that's equal to QS over QR. Now we know the length of QR, that's A, the diameter length of the big semicircle. And from there, we can also find the length of QS because that's just the diagonal of the big square. The side lengths of the big square are a, and so the length of the diagonal of the big square is root 2 times A. So QS, the diagonal, has a length of root 2 times A, or A root 2, and QR has a length of A. I'll leave it to you if you like to use the Pythagorean theorem to verify that the diagonal of a square with side length A has length root 2 A. But that's pretty basic, so you can do that if you're not sure. All right, so then focusing on these two parts of the equation, A minus T over T, we can split that fraction up into a over t minus 1, and then that equals over here, the a's cancel out, so it's just equal to root 2. Remember, we want our final expression for the area to be in terms of a, so we're going to solve this for t so that t is expressed in terms of a. To do that, we'll add one to both sides and then invert both sides of the equation. That will give us that t over a is equal to one over one plus root two. And then we can multiply both sides by a to find that t is equal to a over one plus the square root of two. Next, we have some more proportionality to discuss, this time with similar triangles. Triangle QNO is certainly similar to triangle QR. T. We know that because angle QRT is a right angle, it's part of a square, and angle QNO is also a right angle because it's a radius touching a tangent. Thus, this segment, which cuts this larger triangle, is parallel to the third side. Hence, it cuts from the larger triangle a smaller similar triangle. So again, triangle QNO is similar to triangle QRT. And now we can actually get the diagonal of the smaller square involved because QN, this is congruent to the diagonal of the smaller square. So this length here is D. And so the ratio of D to the radius of the yellow circle that ratio must be the same as the ratio of QR to RT. Let's call the ratio of the smaller circle lowercase r for radius. So then we have that D over R is equal to the ratio of QR to RT. Remember this length here is A and this length here we're calling little t. So this is equal to A over little t. So then we'll multiply both sides of this equation and now we've got D by itself. So we are getting warmer. Now D is equal to this AR over T. A obviously is in terms of A. T we just figured out in terms of A is A over one plus root two. So what we have left to do then is figure out what R is in 
terms of A. Coming back to our diagram, there is an old favorite we can use to do some work with R and eventually express it in terms of A, and that is the Pythagorean theorem. We have this little right triangle here. The part, the letter Q was already here labeling this length, so we could say that B squared plus R squared equals Q squared. However, we know what Q must equal. Imagine we continue this segment until it touched this point on the semicircle and the small yellow circle. Then the length of this whole segment here would have to be A over 2, the radius of the semicircle, because it's going from the center to a point on the semicircle. Then to get this length of Q, we would just have to cut this part of the segment off, the part that happens to be a radius of the yellow circle. In other words, it would be A over 2, the radius of the semicircle, minus R, the radius of the yellow circle. There I sketched out what it would look like if we continued this segment Q in case that helps, so its length is just A over 2, minus r. That gives us q, and we can use that in the Pythagorean theorem. We have then that b squared plus r squared is equal to a over 2 minus r squared. However, we can take this b and rewrite it in terms of an expression with a and d using this equation from before. Certainly, if d equals a over 2 plus b, then b is equal to d minus a over 2, and that will be better. Then this becomes d minus a over 2 squared plus r squared equals a over 2 minus r squared. At this point, we can start to expand. Hopefully you are good at expanding binomials. This is going to be d squared minus a times d, and then plus a squared over four. r squared is just r squared, and then we'll also expand the binomial on the right. That's going to become a squared over four minus a times r, plus r squared. Remember, our original objective came from getting to this equation and seeing that we could express all of this in terms of a, except for r. So right now we're hoping to get r by itself. Thankfully, there's some good cancellation with this equation. a squared over four, a squared over four cancels out. r squared, r squared cancels out. So then on one side, we would just have negative a r. Let me write that just as r, and let's suppose we divided both sides by that negative a. Then we would have negative AD divided by negative A, which is just positive D, and then D squared divided by negative A, which is minus D squared over A. Now, since we're trying to express R in terms of A, let's go ahead and replace D with AR over T. Doing that is going to give us AR over T, that's what D is, and then minus A squared R squared over T squared a. All right, so there we go. We've got some cancellation here. A squared over A, a factor of A cancels out. So finally, we have that R is equal to A R over T minus A R squared over T squared. Then focusing just on the R equals this part, let's multiply everything by T squared to cancel out these fractions. Thus, on the left, we'll have R times T squared. On the right, we'll have A R T minus A R squared. And now it's safe to assume that r is non-zero, it's a radius of a circle, so let's go ahead and divide everything here by r. Dividing everything by r produces the equation t squared equals a t minus a r. Then solving for r is pretty simple. We'll just subtract a t from both sides and then divide by negative a. So then on one side, we'll just have r, and on the other side, t squared minus a t but we're dividing by a negative, so it becomes a t minus t squared, and that negative we were dividing by was negative a. We can then, of course, split up the fraction. a t over a is just t, and then minus t squared over a. All right, now this is pretty good. We can find the area of the blue square from its diagonal, and now we can express the diagonal in terms of a, and t, which we can express in terms of a, and r, which we can express in terms of t, and then put that in terms of a. The area of the square, of course, is its side length squared. We don't know its side length, but we do know its diagonal. Then it's easy to see from the Pythagorean theorem that the side length, let's say s, of the square is the diagonal length divided by the square root of two. 
Hence, the area that we're looking for is d squared over 2, because we just have to square the side length. So d squared over 2. We know from long ago that d is a r over t. So this area is equal to a r squared divided by 2 times t squared. Then we just have to put this all in terms of a, which I'm going to suffer through, but I'll let you speed through it. <laughs> So 3 minus 2 root 2 times a squared. And so that is the area of the blue square. Now in the original puzzle, it actually gave a value for a. It said that a was 10 centimeters. Now we've figured out a general formula. We could plug in the value of a equals 10 centimeters and put this in a calculator, we would arrive at an area for the blue square of about 17.16 square centimeters. So there we go, some uh, fun geometry and some hairy algebra as usual. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm a table, I'm feeling art to keep the cable cut and untucked the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. Wish to sell my own fake, I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so.